what makes a song great for me, like a standout track, is usually the great groove. That rhythm and the bass is like tight. Mm. You just, I mean, it doesn't matter that it's like seven minutes of a loop on repeat for me. I could just listen to it all night, you know. I moved to London to study at Goldsmiths, so South East London, and that's where I've lived ever since. Because there's loads of creative people down there that are trying to just get shit to happen. It's really motivating. My name is Laura Bettinson. I am a producer, a songwriter, and a vocalist, and a DJ, dog owner. This is Bullet, who's my executive producer. <laughs> I started at about age 14, I was making grime music. Back then I didn't actually write, I just would freestyle on like a really simple Logitech mic with like my tights over it, just because of the, the popping and stuff, it was really bad. My first ever song was like a freestyle about uh, drinking tea. My name is Sikena and I'm a singer, songwriter, producer from London. Collaborating with other songwriters like Laura is really refreshing because there's no pressure. Ideas flow really easily. There's no force to, you know, try to make something that's supposed to sound like something. It's just whatever naturally occurs, occurs. And um, I think that's the best way to make music, in my opinion. Well, I can play you a couple of things that I threw together, oh, yes, basically. Please. And if neither of them are any good, we can just start something else. What's the loud kick drum? I think one thing that you do really well and I try and always keep in mind is like not crowding like productions too much, you know, just keeping it quite minimal, like a fucking killer beat. And let's try and get some good like guitar sounds, and some like weird sounds. Yeah, so that was something I thought that might work. Yeah. Projects, I guess it's influenced me is meeting um, my friend Nigel Godrich and uh, we formed a band together. He's been a huge influence on me in terms of just, just giving things a go. Once we kind of had the rhythm locked down and we knew the tempo we were working at, I wanted to give as much time as possible to see what we can do with the guitar, see which sounds we can get out of it, and then recontextualize it into kind of more of an electronic, housey, garagey. Really, my aim was to take this guitar and, and make something unusual out of it and just show you, like, well, you know, it doesn't have to always sound like a guitar. Let's put this in and we can just, now we've got that as a basis, we can yeah, just have a little play again over the top of that. Let's get back in there and, and give that a little whirl. C, D. E. <laughs> it's an E. Okay. Our idea kind of was to sample the guitar just in a way that I guess you wouldn't think of doing, which I found quite fun. And then we had, we actually had a drum beat already made before to fit it onto. So we sampled the guitar, used the samples to put something around the drums, and then ended up just fattening up from there, really. For me, this was an opportunity to kind of, you know, to record, just to see which ways we can push it. Getting somewhere. Let, yeah. <laughs> let's get a little bass sound up here. Yeah, it's what we're thinking, like vocal wise. <clears throat> Just something quite spoken. Or... Yeah, maybe. Mm. It was to this rhythm. Don't you like it? Yeah. Don't you deny it? Yeah. yeah. Don't you try yeah. fight it? I can't believe that's that guitar. I know, isn't it? I know. I keep forgetting. It's like a little chirpy bird. Yeah, 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 it's like a little chirpy bird. I really enjoy working with other writers that are also producers. With Sakena today, it's like I know she's an amazing producer, so I didn't want to dominate too much. I was like, well, we can start it off and I can, you know, give you some ideas, but really, you know, if she wants to fall in love with the track, it's got to come from her. I think I forgot how it goes, oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I make you like it. it. Yeah. Right, move it sideways, just do it. 
Just try, mate. Yeah, I don't have a formula as such, but um, I try to approach it from the chorus first. For me, that's the most bulkiest bit. And I treat it like a tree trunk. So once I have the tree trunk, the branches sort of like follow on and then I can put the leaves on and stuff. You try it. Don't think too much about it. The right, move it sideways. Just do it. Don't fight it, fight it. I think I'm good there. Yeah? Yeah. It's so wild. I mean, what other profession do you do that in? You get into a room with somebody and you've got to kind of like create something together in quite a short space of time without really knowing anything about each other. Definitely not the kind of piece of music I thought I was going to be making. Me too. I'm pleased, I'm pleased. When I hear a finished song that I've written, the feeling I get is like accomplished, relief, maybe even slightly stressful because it's like, is it actually really finished? Because it's like, you know, you could always do more and it's just knowing when to stop. When working with other producers, it's almost like you're on a blind date, but then it's like you get to kind of know each other enough to be able to put an idea down that you both like. Everyone would bring something to the table. So it's really nice to be in a room with somebody that I know produces and I know she has her sound nailed and it was so, refreshing to hear a UK voice. It's the tracks that have something different going on and a different personality on them that, you know, usually stick with you. And that's something I've always thought about the music that Sakaina makes. It's like, I hear it and I'm like, oh, that's Sakaina. Because she has such a distinctive voice and it's so UK. Um, and I love that.